I recently came across the story of a world traveling family who's doing crypto cold storage, nomad capitalist style. I'm going to share this with you and why I think it's so important. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where the channel and the company that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And here's a story from CNBC.com, where we were recently featured for our Nomad Beach Index. The headline says, this is the family that bet everything on Bitcoin when it was $900. I'll bet they are some seven or eight figure investors. Now they're storing it in secret vaults on four different continents. Didi Tahitu along with his wife and three kids, liquidated all their assets and bought Bitcoin back in 2017, back when it was trading about $900 before the run-up. Now the Dutch family of five is safeguarding most of their crypto fortune in secret vaults on four different continents. This is the kind of diversification I'm always telling you about. You want to be geographically diversified. I have hidden the hardware wallets across several countries so that I never have to fly very far if I need to access my cold wallet in order to jump out of the market explained Tahutu, patriarch of the so-called Bitcoin family. He has two hiding spots in Europe, another two in Asia, one in South America, and a sixth in Australia. We aren't talking about buried treasure. None of the sites are below ground or on a remote island, but the family told CNBC the crypto stashes are hidden in different ways in a variety of different locations, ranging from rental apartments and friends' homes to self-storage sites. I prefer to live in a decentralized world where I have the responsibility to protect my capital. That is the ultimate nomad capitalist experience. Now, what I want to caution you on is if you're an American or some other nationality, do understand if you open a bank account overseas, I don't know why you would do this, but if you decided to get a bank safe deposit box and put your crypto wallet in there, that could theoretically be something in some countries that might be reportable because it's part of the banking system. But if you go outside of the banking system, now you're opening yourself up to a lot more flexibility. Now, I'm not giving you tax advice because the rules are constantly changing. I don't know when you're watching this. There's so many different situations and countries. Obviously, you want to get tax advice. We work with a number of professionals around the world here. Uh, but for me, what have I told you? own properties around the world. If you can put together a portfolio. Now I know some crypto people, they're, they're waiting for it to always go up. I think having at least one home somewhere else that you own, you know, put together a way where you can own crypto, you know, stick it in the drywall, put it in a safe, bury it in the floor, hide it in a cereal box, have a place that's not in your home country where you can store whatever it is. This could apply to gold. This could apply to whatever. But if you have a ledger, if you have some kind of cold storage, uh, you can store your crypto in your own home or in your own homes. We've talked about buying land. Now, they've said they do not uh, bury their, their treasure uh, you know, underground. That could be an option. There are also non-bank vaults, non-bank safe deposit box services. Now, Austria was one of the last ones that allowed anonymous vaults. That ended recently. Um, so that option is gone. But you can go to Singapore, you can go to Austria, you can go to Switzerland. I mean, so many countries around the world, if it's just, just a vault you want, just a safe deposit box, that's pretty reasonable. I mean, we're talking a hundred bucks a year, a couple hundred bucks a year. You can do that. You can rent those spaces. And what I like about what they're saying is, listen, we don't want to travel with it. I'm reading into that what they're saying, but that's what I hear. We don't want to travel with it. I know people say, hey, why do you need an offshore bank account? Why do you need stuff overseas? I can travel with my ledger. Sure. Okay. You know, is that is enforcement ever going to be stepped up the same way, you know, you've seen things where people carrying too many gold coins that weren't reported, people carrying too much cash, you know, are some governments, probably Western governments, going to get smart about, you know, is that a ledger? Uh, I know that one of the last time, the very last time I flew out of the U.S., the last time I ever went to the U.S., when I flew out of the U.S., I went to the TSA checkpoint, always frustrating, and uh, the guy says, you got a knife in your bag, with the confidence of God himself knife. And I'm thinking like, where would I have a knife? He goes through, he rips my entire bag apart. I got one of these, um, at the time I had like a Tumi backpack that has like 82 different compartments. He finally finds like this deep inner compartment. He goes in. He's like, what's this? Uh, it's a business card holder. <laughs> my Xenia business card holder was perceived to be a knife. Uh, is there going to be a time when they're on, on, on the lookout for your ledger? Is there going to be a time? Now, okay, obviously people have different ways of, of storing crypto. Uh, but for me, you know, constantly traveling around, I'll also tell you, uh, because I had this, you know, the Tumi backpack, everything has a place to go. Now I have, you know, a little, you know, briefcase, you know, I mean, 
I always have everything about having a place. How many people just, you know, in the, in the rush of, you know, multiple security checkpoints, immigration, all kinds of different stuff, they just, you know, throw stuff in different places. Think you could ever lose your ledger? I mean, imagine you've got a million bucks or 10 million bucks or God knows how much on one of these things and it gets lost, it gets misplaced. You know, for me, I think putting these in storage, uh, again, if you control it, your own home, your own property, could be whatever kind of property that may be. Um, sure, if you trust a friend, leave with a friend in their own property. But we're getting geographical diversification with, with this. You're getting multiple jurisdictions. And if you're traveling around the world, let's say you're following my trifecta strategy. You have homes where they're owned or rented, places where you spend time in three different cities, three different places. You know, this is where the global citizenship sandwich could come in. Maybe you want to spend four months a year living in Colombia, but you don't want to keep the ledger in Colombia. Or maybe you want to keep it away from where you are in Colombia, somewhere further away. But, you know, hey, maybe you want to put it in Panama. Maybe you want to put it uh, somewhere else. You know, if you're in, uh, living in, in Thailand, um, maybe you want to keep it in a, in a private uh, safe deposit box in Singapore. And so you've got that security, you've got the safety. Um, you know, sometimes you want to live in a place where I don't think too many places in the world are unsafe, but maybe it's not quite as safe enough to keep, you know, $100 million in crypto. And you want to put it somewhere that has a rock solid vault. The Singapore's, the Switzerland's, some of the places in Europe, you know, Frankfurt's, Liechtenstein, you know, those kind of places. I've never been impressed with too many of the facilities in the Americas. I haven't seen them all, but the ones I've seen, like Panama, and you know, I wasn't blown away. But okay, hey, it could work. Um, and I think that uh, no matter what you're doing, I don't want to keep stuff where I'm at. Um, I would maybe want to keep some stuff where I'm at, but let's say you own homes around the world. Maybe you keep a ledger in each one. Or again, maybe you keep it somewhere nearby. Uh, diversifying geographically is a great idea. So kudos to uh, the Bitcoin family. This is something I think more people should look at. Uh, we've talked a lot about private vaults for gold. If you're an American, it's one of the legally non-reportable asset classes, you know, vaulting precious metals outside of the financial system overseas. It's a good way to protect your money. If you're in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, this could be something to think about as well. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.